There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you might be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my StreamYard virtual studio by the one, the only, Nick Pino, the EMF guy. Nick, what's up, my brother? How are you, man? Hey, Jay. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. It's awesome to have you. So you and I actually have crossed paths at various places going back some time, which we haven't actually had a chance to actually you know, speak one-on-one until now, which is cool. Um, and I'm grateful that you're actually on the podcast. So for you guys that don't know Nick, I'm going to give you a little bit quick bio. He is, again, known as the EMF guy and the number one best-selling author of the non-tinfoil guide the EMFs, and an advocate for safe technologies, becoming a leading voice on the topic of electromagnetic pollution and how it affects our health. But speaking of tinfoil, just in case we need to go down that path, I always, oh, you're I always ready. have my tinfoil <laughs> hat because my, my good buddy owns tinfoilhat.co, so he always sends me his tinfoil hats. But um, all right, so we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff today, but really quickly, because this is what I've been doing now on the Jay Campbell podcast in the year 2024. And... Today is March 1st, and I know you have a big thing coming, um, so we're getting this in, into production as soon as we possibly can. Um, what is your take right now on humanity? You know, We're going to get into your talking points and go deeper, but obviously I ask people to come on the show now, like, are you a buyer of humanity? Are you, are, you, are you a short seller or a buyer of humanity at this point? <laughs> Jeez, my God, that's a, yeah, I didn't expect this one. I mean, I... <laughs> I, I kind of have to be an optimist uh, or else I just I just uh, cry in a corner of my bedroom, you know, sure. from this bedroom slash office, I have reached out probably over a million people about the topic of EMFs in the last seven years. Yeah. And I'm just, you know, a guy with a background in communications from Montreal who is curious and uh, improvised myself as a citizen journalist 14 years ago. So. I mean, the reality is if you want to complain about it, you can or you yeah. can do something about it. So I, I, I just cannot help myself but to to say things are going they're they're going very, very wrong <laughs> in the world when it comes to people's <laughs> health, environmental health, millions of satellites. It's going very, very uh, fast in the wrong direction for EMFs, too. That's a reality. For example, in, in 2017, I was talking about the issues, and but now we have 5G that's rolled right. out, and there's a million satellites that billionaires want to roll out. Right. This is a huge problem. If I focus on the bad, I get I become crazy. So, you know, the reality is I do what I can to raise awareness and uh, try to live my life uh, <laughs> happy at the same time, which is, it's tough. It's tough it to is. know the big issues, but at the same time, bring, bring it back to your everyday life and just actually enjoy, you know, time with your wife and kid. It's, it's kind of a, a, a tough dance here. That's a very good answer. Um, and it, it does come down to your mindset, you know, your awareness, like where you place your thoughts, because we are in a very crazy world, you know, but obviously if you place your, if you yeah. place your mind or your, you know, slash your consciousness, which is really all there is into your thoughts and make your thoughts resonant, you know, powerful, positive, that's the reality you create. And obviously that's the type of people you create or attract into your life. And I know you're doing the same thing that I'm doing. And it is, it's, it is, it's a tightrope. You know, we walk a delicate dance because, you know, I left the States in 2022. My wife and I sold our houses in Southern California and we moved to Mexico and we were living on the beach, bro. And I honestly got rid of all of my things. You know, I was free. And unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on the person that you're giving that perspective to, we moved back to Florida or the States and we've been living here. And, you know, after I sold a nice house in San Diego, I bought a nice house in Tampa and I'm back in the matrix, but it's like, you know, you really take for what it's really like when you're not as, but being bombarded 
as you are in the West because Mexico doesn't even have 5G. I mean, there's some places in like the Western part of the continent now that have it because it's coming in from Southern California and stuff. But like, it's a totally different experience down there. They're not spraying in the skies. You don't have all of this, again, W uh, W E F. You don't have the electromagnetic interference or distortions that you have, say, in Florida where there's a 5G tower on every corner, right? So it's like, it's a whole different ballpark. And so I'm very much like you, you know, obviously that's why you're on here today. I mean, I I see the issues and I, I you know, I speak about them and scream to the high heavens. And so that's obviously why you're here today. But it is, it's not, it's not easy to walk this rope. You have to do, a lot of proactive, you know, work and effort uh, to ensure yourself. And obviously you're going to talk about that right now, but so let's just talk about it because, you know, I've had Brandon Amalani, the CEO of Blue Shield on this call, on this show, you know, a couple of times now, and him and I are actually into talks of doing a, a live stream, a regular live stream to really, you know, get the um, important information out there about how it really is critically important to your overall health to insulate yourself from, you know, again, the damages of the EMF, which is everywhere. But can you maybe just for people that aren't as aware, although most people on this show or this in my audience are, but can you just talk a little bit about EMFs and how the exposure has just dramatically increased in the last, you know, 10 to 100, really 100 years? For sure. I'll talk about EMFs in, in, a, in a very simple terms. I'll talk about it in, think about noise in the environment. There's good EMFs, natural EMFs that our bodies have co-evolved with in the term in, in in the sun, in the Schumann resonance, which comes from the planet Earth, the natural earth magnetism. And also, you know, if you're touching the ground with your bare feet, you're also getting a DC signal. So electricity sent by the uh, by the earth, electrons going up your body. So there are many aspects of nature that provides us with emfs and we also have man-made emfs artificial emfs this is the junk food of emfs that we've created for ourselves the average level of radio frequency radiation that's wi-fi bluetooth cell towers cell phones the average level in a city is now a quintillion times higher than a hundred years ago a quintillion times is a billion times a billion Right. So for a lot of people who tell me in the comments, uh, well, you know, we've always been exposed to the sun and a cell phone signal is so much less intense than the sun. So how, how come we're impacted? Well, this is comparing apples to oranges. One of them is biocompatible, the sun, sunshine, our, our body knows what to do with it. And then there's also, he knows what to do when I've got enough, right? I'm burning right now. I got to go in the shade. Right. But it doesn't know what to do with radio frequency radiation, with the cell towers and with everything that we've introduced in the environment. In fact, one researcher I was listening to a presentation this morning said that it takes three to four weeks for our cells to adapt to radio frequency radiation. Incredible. Uh, but the thing is, every time it changes, the voltage in the environment changes slightly it takes another three to four weeks to adapt. So let me ask you this. Are we adapted to this, these exposures? No, of course not. Of course not. So we're never really adapting. And some people tell me, Nick, you know, these EMFs, our, our bodies must perceive it as stress, but maybe, you know, it's making us stronger in a sense. And they think about cold exposure. Right. They think about heat. They Resilience. think about exercise, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hormetic stressors where right. you, you break yourself down and you recuperate and then you have a benefit. And now, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. This is not the case, folks, because we're talking about unabated 24-7 exposure. Yeah. So it is the chronic exposure that is problematic. So this is really how much more we've increased exposure. But lately, I see even more exposure where people don't talk on the phone like this, but they have Bluetooth earpieces, they have wearables. So was, we're bringing yeah. these devices close to our body. And these are among the most dangerous uses of this technology that we can uh, ever uh, make. That's what's crazy, Nick, is that, you know, I've seen studies and stuff too. I mean, they don't even have second and third order understandings or awareness of what just cell phones are doing, right? Like you hear the stories of glioglastoma brain tumors, 
and all these other things that, again, these EMF, you know, signals and electromagnetic frequencies are probably causing. I mean, they don't really even have enough data. If they do, it's hidden. But it's crazy. I mean, I can tell you personally that I cannot use anything that goes in my ear. It causes massive wax buildup. I don't have any hearing damage, knock on wood, so far. But I, I refuse. You know, I, I if I'm going to wear anything, and I know everything is bad, Bluetooth that's related Bluetooth. But if I'm going to wear anything now. I have like these wired that go behind my ears, and they're wired, and they're still. I know none of it is good. I, I mean, at the end of the day, we're obviously in this third dimensional, whatever you want to call it, experience or sense of reality, and there's so much technology that you know somewhat provides benefits you know from a standpoint of like oh i can listen to my music wirelessly and i can get energized and amped or whatever from my music but obviously yeah. there's so much you know again dirty electricity electromagnetic frequencies whatever you want to call it that are that are probably causing issues with biological system functioning but we don't even have like the like i said we have no long-term effects and if there are you know they're they're suppressed i mean i mean i mean obviously the cell phone has been around now for you know a good 25 years but i don't think they really understand what cell phones are doing to people's brains and heads other than you know the known that about the tumors well you know what we do know is strong enough that scientists have been saying well some of them for decades that we should you know change things and yeah. Uh, many scientists said we should have a, a, a moratorium on 5G. We should never roll out these satellites. Right. And of course, it's it's meeting deaf ears. So it's it's tough. But you know what we know about cancer is years ago we had enough data to reclassify this agent called radio frequency radiation as a class one carcinogen. Right. The other class one carcinogens are pe are things that people know are bad. Asbestos right. and smoking. Think about so, that. It's a class one carcinogen and it nobody should be reclassified. It. It's it's a class two B, but still the data was there. The data is very clear from top epidemiologists back in 2018. And it has not made it yet. And 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 even at the WHO, of course, I mean, who expects much from the WHO <laughs> these days? Paul Schwab, let them meet bugs. Yeah, well, exactly. But there's there's a branch ca called the International Agency for Research on Cancer. And in 2011, they, they did classify this radiofrequency radiation as a class 2B carcinogen, but they lacked the animal data. Now we have it, and we, we, we've we had it since 2018. And it's strong enough to to deserve a classification in, in uh, the one category. But it's not the, the primary concern for me. Uh, of course, brain cancer is super dangerous, and right. you can die from cell phone exposure. So let's not take this lightly. However, it doesn't talk about the effect on fertility. Right. It doesn't talk right. about the effect on hormones, on brain waves, for example, for yeah. sleep, which yeah. can, uh, we, we know that cell phones can change brain wave yeah. patterns. And, you know, some provocation studies back in uh, 2008 with old Nokia phones. Again, all these studies are kind yeah, of with so old technology. Ago. Yeah. It's so long ago, it's stupid because now we're, you know, iPhone 15 or, and even <laughs> by the time I'm finishing my sentence, the 16 will be launched. I mean, isn't it crazy? It's like, it's moving so fast, right? So we're, we're the best studies we have on EMF dangers is rats exposed yeah. long-term to 2G and 3G. Yeah. The 3G towers are being dismantled yeah, exactly. in the US they're as we speak yeah, because they're meaningless. they're meaningless because they're so old. So yeah. our ability to study this technology is greatly surpassed by the speed of change. Yeah. And this is why things are increasingly crazy and and why we cannot um uh, we cannot really believe that anything is safe at the moment, which makes it super overwhelming, don't get me wrong, but at the same time you mentioned a few things the things that are touching your body, for sure, they're the most dangerous for you. Yeah, it's it's bar none because they might be related to the development of cancer, yeah. and researchers don't don't even know. And that's the the hard part about it is the unknowns are more concerning to me than the knowns because there yeah. are so many areas that lack data. For example, why are young people in their teenage years and young twenties? increasing in certain cancer types of the groin area. I'm talking right. about testicular cancer, ovarian yeah. cancer, yeah. colon yeah. cancer. Could it be linked to cell phones in the pocket? Absolutely or people? it is. Well, probably, but we cannot conclude for sure. So a lot of people recuperate this uncertainty and say, oh, you know, the jury is out. Yeah, exactly.
Well, well, I think I think at this point, Nick, it's time I should put my hat on and we should go even deeper. Because yeah, let's I, go. I would actually ask you my que- my question, which I always ask is like, we know all of this harmful, dirty electromagnetic frequencies are circling the planet. You know, if you've read what is the book, uh, the not the electric universe, but the rainbow, whatever. The with, invisible uh, rainbow the invisible by Arthur Person. Amazing yep. book, right? Yes. I mean, clearly identified all the issues, talked about the radio frequency increase. Again, going back 120 years, Tesla warned us. I mean, there's so many people that, you know, in the past and future past, whatever, uh, you know, have talked about what is happening and what's going to happen. It's like, how does a person really truly insulate ourselves? Because obviously the next point is really the worst sources in EMFs. I mean, you were talking about, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about it. You're talking about hormones. I mean, obviously that's my wheelhouse. And it's like, we've never had worse. Uh, we've never had a lower birth rate in the history of like the civilized world. I mean, again, in the measuring of like the last 120 years when we actually could measure this kind of stuff, most people in their 30s and early 40s couples have to use fertility medications just to even get pregnant. So again, and and, and this is how the way I look at it is like we as a species, the human XY and XX chromosomes are under a full system or full spectrum assault from the air that we breathe, the water that we drink, the food that we eat, the dirty and harmful electromagnetic frequencies in the air that surround us. Dude, it's everywhere. I mean, I mean, there isn't really a way to actually protect yourself other than to be extremely proactive. And obviously you're going to share with us strategies on how to do it. But it's like, like I tell people all the time, it's like, if you're not the proactive scientist of your own health, the system is not going to help you. The system is encouraging this as you just shared for the last 10 minutes. Well, you know, there are ways to protect yourself and it's, it's hard because you cannot live in a bubble, right? Right. One of the ways is getting away from civilization in some <laughs> corner and praying that they don't install satellites over you, right? Moving That's one way. But you know, the mountain. Yeah, I got it you. doesn't work for most people. So the right. reality is if you live in a city, it is increasingly difficult to stay healthy. If you keep that in mind and you choose your poisons, I choose to live in a city personally as the EMF guy. So that tells yeah. you something. You can I I still thrive, but if I ever get sick and don't feel well in a city, maybe I'll move to the countryside. This right. is not my journey right now. Right. However, it might be in the future. P- some people develop these sensitivities where they become more and more sensitive to these signals and they, they have no choice. But for people who feel relatively well and they say, you know, I don't feel this stuff. I feel okay when I use my phone. Okay, well, you're in the perfect position to start reducing your exposure and never get sensitive and never feel completely sickened by this technology. So first is the devices that are touching your body are the most dangerous. I already said that. Second thing is anything that is within an arm's length of your pillow is a problem. It's a problem for your sleep and it's a problem not only for your sleep, but also for distractibility and just the devices need to stay in, in another room. Uh, if they are in your room, should be turned off or on airplane mode, but this is prone to a lot of user error. So for a lot of people, I tell them, charge it in another room. A lot of people report better sleep. And that's important to note. People report better, better sleep when they turn off their own phone, not the yeah. neighbor's phone, not the neighbor's Wi-Fi, not the smart meters, not the satellites, and not the cell phone towers. So what does it tell you? Yeah. It tells you that the body can actually start feeling better even when you just turn off right. this darn phone. So it th- it tells you also that the phone was a big problem compared to other issues outside of your home. So a lot of things that you do have control over are those things that you decide to install inside your home. For example, your Wi-Fi router. So what I tell people is if you have a home office like me, my computer is not moving. It's a laptop, but yeah. let's face it, I, it's just a it's a desktop. It's it's just there. It doesn't move. I never use it on the sofa and don't move with it. So why why should it be on Wi-Fi? Well, that's just because people don't think twice about it. It's right. just how we do things these days. You can use an Ethernet cable, a long cable, and even have an IT company pass it in the walls if you, you don't want to see it in the middle of the corridor, which is probably a good idea long term. And if if you do that, you wire up your computer, you don't have EMFs. You don't have this this Wi-Fi blasting you all the time. So for me, as an author, I spend, what, 30 hours per week at this desktop. 
So I would be exposed to all of these signals and now I'm not. So therefore I make myself more resilient for the unavoidable exposure that I get in Montreal from the towers and neighbors and other people. But a lot of people have this, you know, this attitude of dismissal saying, oh, you know, we're always blasted by EMS. So therefore there's nothing I'll do. Well, that's a bit of a cop out if you if you want my opinion. Yeah. So you can change certain things about your behavior. It's not convenient. It's not necessarily that easy, but you do have to make these choices. And once once you start reducing exposure, you are minimi minimizing the effects on your health. So a lot of people see better hormones, better sleep, better yeah. energy, and it's it it can impact every single aspect of your health because it does disrupt every single aspect of your health. And I think it's it's really on the on the cellular level, it's really just a, a reduction in energy production uh, at the cell level that, that EMFs cause. So if you have more EMFs, less energy, less EMFs, more energy. So it's it's quite simple. This is biological noise that yeah. you want to minimize in, in your life if you're trying to get healthy. Yeah, I mean, those are all, that's all good advice. What do you think... Like, how would somebody know if they're suffering from radiation or EMF sickness? Like, what would be the common manifestation? A lot of people experience uh, insomnia. That's yeah. telling. Some people get heart palpitations or tinnitus. Tinnitus, one environmental medicine doctor uh, told me she's uh, um, she practices in South Carolina. She sees a lot of people that are hypersensitive, much more than a, de a decade ago. Many doctors tell me. So if some people are skeptical and they're, they, they put their tinfoil hat, or st uh, <laughs> hat on already right. and say, well, this is probably, you know, not serious. I I can I can connect you with doctors that see these patients every single day. Yeah, that's day. actually a great advice, Nick. Because do you know how many people literally talk about that's the number one physiological or disease ideology of today that is like new new, and that is like I have I have unbelievable anxiety. I can't sleep at night. I can't sit still. You're right. This is all from radiation or EMF poisoning. Hundred percent. It's part of it. And, and the thing is, sometimes it's very hard to pinpoint, is it causal or is it, you know, right. part of it? Right. For some people, they're going to have EMF sensitivity, food allergies. They're going to have parasites. They're going to have, sure. you know, so many things. And on top of that, <laughs> they never, ex they didn't, they didn't uh, move, move their asses from the couch for 40 right. years. So, I mean, there's also sedentary, se sedentarity. Right. So, I mean, it, right. it's multifactorial, but the, the, the one way that these doctors will try to pinpoint, is it an EMF sensitivity or right. are you super exposed to EMFs to the point where you need to move away or change environments? They're going to tell them to go camping, yeah, uh, you know, true. a camping trip for seven days, no devices. And for some people, this is transformational. It kind of sounds stupid for some people say, my God, haven't slept in six months. In when I go camping, I sleep well. What does it tell you about your environment? Well, yeah. it tells you that something is wrong. It might be work stress. It might be mold. It might be chemicals. It might be something else that is wrong with your home. But also EMF needs to be in the mix. The problem with EMF is that since everyone has uh, has been convinced, and I think part of it is really has been engineered through PR and, you know, um, modifying the message by, by big wireless, I, I think there's just, they're just been they've been taking these assumptions from the public that the topic is not serious and they've been pushing it a hundred percent. So the average lay person in the street, they think, Oh yeah, this is, you know, it, this topic is not serious. If you dive into it, you go on PubMed and you type the research around radio, radio frequency radiation. You, you say, Oh my God. Well, There's I thought massive, yeah. massive yeah. amount. It is more well studied than many toxic agents right. that we know are dangerous. And even, and, even and, endocrine disrupting chemicals, there's more information on it. Exactly. So what happened, for example, last year, Dr. Andrew Huberman, you know, big guy on the Never internet. Heard of Andrew Huberman. I'm just millions and millions of followers, neuroscientists from Stanford. And he actually dared to look at the science and he said, geez, guys, I, I and he, he, he was all, you know, Almost, uh, it, it was all um, very stressed that it would be perceived as a tinfoil hatter. So he said, you know, normally I'm not one for conspiracy theories and blah, blah, blah. But the data, and he said the data on cell phones disrupt fertility and testosterone right. is stronger right. 
than BPA. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I know that for a fact. So I know so that it's, for a fact. That's that's one hundred percent true. But the thing is, I mean, to, to go deeper though, I mean, man, it's it's people. You, you already said it, but we'll just talk about it. I mean, if you wake up in the morning and the first goddamn thing you do is pick up your phone, you've got it all broken. Yeah. Talk about having a hyperactivity or a hypersensitivity to it. I mean, so many people, you already said it too. You know, I'm constantly telling these people this, like if you plug your phone in next to your bed and use and sleep with the Wi-Fi signal on, especially like you said, with a wife, with a, with a iPhone or an Android 15, 16, whatever the latest OS is, dude, that is so powerful. If you ever look at one of those EMF meters and you see the amount of charge that is coming out of these devices, dude, it's insane, literally insane. And these people's brains are literally being fried essentially 24 seven. Cause obviously you know that not only are they sleeping next to it, it's the first thing they do in the morning, Nick, is they pick it up. Yeah. The, these are the worst type of exposures you could ever have. So it's really reducing screen time in general is good for your health at all levels. But right. what, what is not, what is not, you know, isolated in all those studies around screen time is EMF exposure. Right. Uh, so we don't know exactly. Is it, you know, are the are most of the benefits because people stop blasting themselves with EMFs? I think this is the case, but you know, it's just speculation at this point. But it's logical that if you minimize exposure, you would have, you know, better neurotransmitters. You Definitely. would feel better, better about yourself. And when you look at the the mental health of the population and you look at the decline in the last three, four years with the pandemic craziness, and you look at the increase in screen time at the yeah. same time, yeah. I mean, there's a big correlation. So, of course, people were, you know, fearful of X, X Y, Z in the news and becoming completely crazy. But on top of that, they increased their exposure so much and stayed inside where you go, don't get any sun, you know. So it was exactly the wrong thing to do. So, right. I mean, hopefully people listening to this, I think they know better. But the hard part is actually doing it because... I knew about EMS a little bit back in 2015, yeah. didn't do much about it. I right. didn't really believe it was such a big deal. And many right. people tell me, even, you know, I had an interview a little bit sooner this day, um, uh, today, and so, uh, uh, a client of a friend of mine uh, said to her, you know, EMF is the last thing I tried in your list of right. everything to do. Nutri I did nutrition, exercise, sun exposure, right. and grounding, and, you know, buying, you know, natural clothing. Right. And then I did EMFs, and ah, uh, turns out you were right. But right. Th why is this the last? Because it's so inconvenient. And also, right. people look at you like you're, you're a freaking tinfoil right. hatting totally. uh, person when you start thinking of just, just saying things like, well, when people come into my home, I prefer, you know, that uh, cell phones are turned off. Or, right. or even when people come into my home, they say, well, what's your Wi-Fi password? I say, well, I have turned off Wi-Fi uh, indefinitely six years ago. I right. say, what? <laughs> what is right. this? I mean, most people who know me are, aren't surprised, but guests that, that are not accustomed to, to the EMF guy way of living, they would say, well, you know, no Wi-Fi. How do you, how do you actually live? <laughs> yeah. It's it, as if, you know, it's, it's a, it's a nutrient or something. I'm the same way. I mean, people attack me, you know, when, when I post messages about uh, EMFs on, on Instagram or social media, wherever, you know, and I get attacked and, you know, I, I don't, I'm at a point now, thankfully, where I don't respond really to most people on this. On, on, I don't, I'm not responding to anybody on the internet. Right. But like the reality is, is like, dude, people still don't know. Yeah. And like, we're so far ahead out in the world right now, not egotistically saying that, but it's what we're saying is all true. It's like you said, the studies are there. The research has always been there. It, 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 you know, I, in my, in my world, you know, I've been talking about testosterone deficiency and and endocrine disrupting chemicals for 20 years, you know, and now it's, it's like, people look at me as like, Oh wow. He was way out in the head. You know, it's like same, yeah. we're going to look at you in the same way, but like, dude, all this is true. What do you think before I let you go? What do you think about some of the technologies that are out there that do things like attempt to transmute the frequencies attempt to, you know, lessen the impact. I mean, I mean, what are your thoughts on that? And obviously be candid, you know, cause I know there's a lot of stuff coming into the marketplace right now. Yeah. I'd say, you know, there, there are different ways to look at it. 
some companies what 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 I don't like about it and then I'll tell you what I like about it. Sure. What I don't like is companies that say use my device, let's say it's a pendant or something. Use this, you're protected, you're fine. You don't have to listen to Nick Pino. You don't have to turn off your phone. You can use it on your head all day, every day. Everything is fine. And I don't agree with it because I don't think we have this level of certainty on the studies that they that they show. And there's always a risk that even though it might it might reduce biological effects, what if it still gives someone brain cancer, right? right. So that's liability for the manufacturer and then it kills someone. So I don't feel good about this. Then there are companies that say, you know, our devices will minimize the effect of EMS, but still be careful about your exposures. I'm all about that. And there are a lot of companies. Uh, you mentioned Blue Shield. That's one that's in, on my short list of companies that are trying to do things. They've done a trial that a colleague of mine who's a doctor sent me. She participated in a, in a trial. So participants seems to be less affected by EMS when they use Blue Shield. That's right. a good well, thing. I have the, I have the cube good in thing. my house. Yeah, I have the cube in my house and I put the cube in my house the day that I moved into this home when I moved back into Florida because I wanted the most, you know, the strongest, you know, from a scientific standpoint, yep. you know, and again, I know there's, like you said, there's doubt because there's just not a lot of proof yet, but but they have, they do now have two, uh, you know, research and, and, and fully funded and approved, uh, you know, uh, not FDA approved, but just basically you know, scientifically given evidence to their what their transmission of their frequency but anyway i don't want to interrupt you but i just want to tell yeah. you i did have that in my home but but that's good and and you know i'm 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 all for it it's just that these technologies are fairly new and yeah. if we don't fully grasp the extent of the damage from emfs we cannot develop technologies yet that will completely shield us or completely Definitely. protect us. So there are many ways to look at it. I think I think we should both uh, minimize EMS through our everyday habits. We can also consider more advanced strategies that are sh physically shielding your bedroom. That yeah. is, you know, painting it with a certain EMF blocking paint or even a bed canopy. There are professionals called Just EMF mitigation in a specialists. Cage, bro. Yeah, a Faraday cage, exactly. Now you're going full tinfoil <laughs> hatter stuff. <laughs> but tinfoil. but it, 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 it does work, you know, and some people feel does. very yeah. good. They get tremendous sleep when they sleep under a Faraday bed or you know yeah. a, a faraday uh, uh, enclosure so that and then if you add in certain technologies that can lessen the effects of emfs i'm all for it but yeah. we shouldn't live under the illusion that this is the you know the magic bullet and right, this tempting so solution yeah yeah exactly and and you know it's tempting for people it's like saying you know oh there's this new greens powder once you take that you don't need to eat veggies i don't need to do right. anything else i'm going to get gains in the gym and you know people get excited i get excited about stuff sometimes i'm I'm, you know, very, very excited about the new thing that I saw, sure. or maybe even a new rehab exercise. I mean, I'm, I'm an uh, amateur athlete, so I'm like, oh yeah, man, if I walk backwards, I'll start, right. you know, everything will heal in my body. No, you know, it's one exercise which can right. help. And right. sometimes we get overexcited. So I, I feel like in the public, some people don't want to hear, you know, ditch Bluetooth. They don't want to hear uh, watch out for your phone in your pocket. Right. They don't want right. to hear any of this. So they say, well, instead I'm going to grab, you know, a device or a pendant and then I'm going to stop, you know, worrying about it. I think that's a mistake. What, before I let you go, what are the two or three best strategies that people can take literally right now today, uh, in your opinion, to limit the harmful exposure? I would say number one, you'll want to turn off your phone or put it on airplane mode if you carry it. So no phone in the pocket or, you know, bra or shirt pocket anywhere on your body for extended periods of time. If it's five minutes, don't go and email me and say, Nick, my God, am I dying right. after five minutes? No, we're talking about hours every day times a lifetime. So just be very conscientious of this and so you then put it in airplane mode or turn the power off completely yeah exactly same thing before bed so i'd say just to maximize your sleep quality and you know your your energy levels make sure to turn off your phone or put it in the next room or on airplane may uh, air, airplane mode and also make sure that the wi-fi and bluetooth antennas are turned off so yeah. it's a bit technical you can get it wrong so put it in the next room if you're not sure what you're doing and then the third i'd say also turn off the wi-fi router yeah and, that's what uh, say, yeah 
you just unplug it or you set it on on like an outlet timer, the same same type of devices you would use on a plug for a Christmas lights. And then you set it and forget it. So start with that. And if you have these three steps right, I think you're already getting somewhere. And then, of course, you can, you know, go on my website and find there's always more to do when it comes to EMS. But, you know, it, it really depends on how much of a priority you realize it is for you. Uh, in the summit, for example, I, I identify, I, I talk with people that are doctors and treat these patients. Some people realize yeah. they're sensitive. It, it won't be enough to turn off Wi-Fi at night for these people right. that are right. sensitive. So this is where you'll want to hardwire things and maybe consider, you know, shielding your bedroom. But it, it's not necessarily something that could be your top priority right now if you don't feel sensitive. But if you do, then, you know, you have to take more action steps and, and mitigate things further. What is your favorite shielding technology for a bedroom? I would say that the best would be shielding paint uh, for most people. Um, and it's an investment. It's a few thousand dollars to, to yeah. do the job right and, and, and test it properly. But make sure that you hire a building biologist or EMF mitigation specialist before and make sure that you know, they take levels before and after and, and guide you through a process because a lot of people do it by themselves and say, yeah, I'll just apply the paint, you know, and, yeah. but it has to be completely enclosed and it yeah. is a technical job. Just like I, I would personally, if I, if I did it in my room, I would hire professionals. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I had, maybe, you know, about them. I had these guys about three months ago or four months ago, reach out to me about putting a, they're doing these like basically not they're not temporary but they're like uh mobile faraday cages around your bed right like you have to have like a king size bed and then they yep. put this like shielding have you seen some of those companies or are you talking to some of those companies that are doing that for now? sure that, a that's a good them. option also you know and yeah. even that's something you could install in a place where you're just renting also yeah. Uh, yeah. it's it's less of a permanent install compared to right. you know uh, actually painting the walls because if yeah. you sell your home then you have to explain yeah there's no you know there's no cell phone signal in my bedroom what? <laughs> I mean, for some people, it might be, you know, something that's going to yes. make the price go up. I mean, if you're, I, I guess if you're in Austin, Texas, or maybe certain oh, parts of like Berkeley, some, maybe some other tinfoil hatters can buy your home and, and be happy with it. But most people would think you're completely out of your mind. Dude, Austin, Texas. I just got back from there. Well, I mean, not this just, but I was in October. That's like San Francisco now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, get out of here. But um, but dude, this has been an amazing uh podcast. Very, very enlightening. Let me throw your stuff up on the on the screen. Um, so you guys obviously go to IG and follow him. You know, go to his YouTube channel. He's got a lot of great content at the EMF guy. And then of course his website is the T H E E M F guy dot com. Did you want to talk about um the event that's coming up real quick? Sure. Well, April eleventh to fourteenth, we have twenty experts, including we have uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. who talks about the legality nice. of EMFs and uh, also the legal rights of electrosensitives. Uh, we have other international attorneys, activists, and also EMF mitigation specialists. We have a few doctors that talk about recovering from these sensitivities. So what, what can you do if you start feeling sick from EMFs and then you feel that you're getting worse? But I mean, what can you do about it because you're getting blasted from all sides? Turns out if you calm down your nervous system and follow right. certain action steps that these doctors talk about, uh, you can get better. So it's called the EMF Hazards Summit 2024. That's the third annual summit I'm putting together. And uh, it's free of charge. It's uh, You can register. There's going to be a link uh, somewhere near this video, I'm sure, and in your, yeah, in your bio and yeah. all of this. Uh, April sure. 11 to 14. So I hope that... Uh, People get a lot of value out of these uh, 20 free interviews that are going to be published. Oh, they definitely will. And there's a lot of value in this podcast today. So guys and gals and all the amazing folks that watch the Jay Campbell and support the Jay Campbell podcast, please always, or as always, support the amazing people. Support Nick. Go to his website, theemfguy.com. Go to Nick Pino on IG or YouTube, the EMF Guy. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.